for, uh, for church. Uh, I got a call this morning from India. My daughter messaged, we used Messenger, and uh, got to talk with her. She started at 7 o'clock, and I wasn't quite ready to talk on Messenger then. And uh, anyway, finally we got it going. And uh, anyway, they've got a huge apartment, but things uh, weren't fixed. And so they had to call, and there, you don't just call one person, you have the carpenter, the assistant carpenter, the carpenter supervisor, the carpenter manager, and the overall, super, uh, the overall maintenance manager. So you have to talk to all those people to get everything done. And she said that she looked, one time she had all the people coming in to work on her stuff, and they all take their shoes off when they come in. So all she saw was bare feet all around her apartment. <laughs> she said, you don't know how many feet were in our apartment today. So anyway, but it was exciting to talk to her, so but, uh, hard to focus on the things that get ready for, for church. Do we have any uh, announcements? Any announcements or any birthdays or anniversaries? Well, Brenda, we had an anniversary last Sunday we were going to celebrate, but we celebrated it down in front of the fire. Yeah, yeah, you had a fire, which after hearing the news around, it's we're thankful we had heat. And uh, so glad, so glad you got another anniversary to celebrate. Um, any birthdays? All right, well, let's go ahead and sing happy anniversary then to you and... and to Brent as he's out working with his calves this morning.
So this is the time when we transition from the things of this world to the spiritual realm. We allow our minds and souls and spirits to focus upon the Lord. And it's so easy to get caught up with the busyness and the worries and cares and to forget about our God who loves us and wants to be with us and wants to give us peace and joy and we're too busy for that kind of thing sometimes. So let's take a moment, let go of those cares and worries that hinder our relationship with the Lord and let Him work within us. I'll give you a couple of minutes to, to pray to the Lord. Uh, I would also recommend you are thankful for the things that you've received. Uh, many of us have talked about how thankful we were that we had heat. <laughs> something we might take for granted and, until something like what happened last week happens. Uh, I was thankful that my daughter wasn't living in Houston at the time, that she's now in India. Uh, and just something you wouldn't even think about unless the weather got so miserable as, as last week. So thankful for things that happen, thankful for things that don't happen. And uh, let's just focus on the Lord. Oh God, we do worship you and we thank you again for your kindness to us. We pray that you would help us to lay aside those worries and cares and grudges and just focus upon the joy of the Lord and your presence with us. Walk among us, speak to us, help us to know your way. We pray that we might listen to your word and your message through song and the message through one another as we as we meet together. Thank you for what you're going to do. We ask for your Holy Spirit to guide us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our psalm is found on 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, only you, have I sinned. And I have done what is evil in your sight, so that you are right when you speak, and are justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in my inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed, crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence, or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of of your salvation, and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Amen. We're going to sing our next song, uh, Do Lord. It's in 527 in your hymn book. Some of you may know this from if you sang it at church camp sometime. 527. And we sing it the way we've done it before, a little different than is written in here. Uh, what's written here is basically the chorus, the do Lord. And then verse one is I've got a home in glory land, and that's actually the fifth verse here. We'll do the fifth verse and then the second verse. And we'll do the chorus in between. So 
So just kind of follow me along.
Now we're going to hear from Corinthians and hear what Paul has to say to us. Thanks be to God, and thank you so much, Donna, for your reading, and thank you, uh, Gail, for your play. I never want to take readers and, and, of course, people who play music for granted, and my wife especially, since she does such an excellent job, and um, it's so easy to take things for granted in these days, and we're thankful for everyone who participates to make this work. Um, I also want to say I'm thankful for the people that help out, like Dale helping out in the community when people need their furnace checked or, or water that doesn't work. And, uh, people who do things to make the church work, like Eugene. We're just thinking about him coming and mowing and keeping things going. And thankful for everybody that has a part and thankful for what God does. And that song we just sang, God will take care of you. Boy, Last week we really needed that, didn't we? We needed him to take care of us. So let's give thanks for the people who participate and help out one another, like the scripture just said, and also thankful that God will take care of us. So let's give thanks to open up with. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers and our thanks. Do we have other prayers, any joys or concerns? Yes. Okay, your mom is in the hospital and she might need surgery. Let's pray for her. Lord, in your mercy, and hear our prayers. Yes. Our aunt Tina recently passed. Your aunt Tina passed away. Tanya? Tanya? Yes. Aunt Tina, aunt Tanya passed away. Okay, let's pray for that family and for you. It's, I'm sure it hurts badly. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayers. Well, yes. I'd like prayers for uh, Stephen and Abby that has a new preemie baby. She's okay. just like four pounds, and this is very cold by them. They're basically homeless. They're staying with their relatives and friends. And yes. They need our prayers, and I pray for that little baby every day. Okay, for... Uh, so far, she's doing very good. Okay, so Stephen and Abby's baby, thankful that... She's here with us, but also prayer for healing, um, complete healing from her surgery, was it? Yeah. She, she had surgery, didn't she have surgery? And she had, she was, uh, Abby? Yeah. No, the... the, the, the baby, no, she didn't have surgery. Oh, the, the baby didn't have surgery, she just premature. She was born two times and... Okay. So she was born premature and... She could fit in the shoebox. She's so tiny. Wow, so tiny, and so we're praying for her to stay healthy, and also for the family, that they may uh, get their home up and running. Yes. Right. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For Gretchen, she's suffering with her knee right now. Okay. Let's pray for healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I talked to Vida, and... Um, 
so far so good with the, she's recovering from her surgery and she goes back in for a checkup and she wants everything to be good there, the complete healing so she doesn't have to have treatments afterwards. So let's pray for Vida. Lord in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. Yes. As for prayer for uh, Sydney North, uh, the family of the girl that was shot, it was an accident. The family is going to church, but I just pray that they won't blame God for the accident. Yes. But, so the, the family that lost their daughter through a shooting accident, and they're going to church praying that they don't take it out on God, that they realize that the truth of the matter, and so let's pray for them, for that family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Dorothy Walfong is still um, getting therapy in Minneapolis at the Minneapolis Health and Rehab Center, and my sister is there as well. And so pray for the therapies that they're receiving um, and the healing may be complete and I don't know if I said this but Dorothy completed her first round of therapy and she was really kind of proud of that and uh, wanted to get around better um, so let's pray for, for them Lord in your mercy hear our prayers anything else Let's go ahead and we'll pray our, we'll sing our prayer song. It is Steal Away to Jesus, 704 in your handbook. Father, we thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for your kindness to us. We pray for those that are hurting in our community who have lost loved ones or also who are hurting because of sickness or injury. We pray for healing for them. We pray for healing on the inside as well as for those that are suffering from um, emotional stress and incidents that have happened that have caused hurt inside. We pray for complete healing. We pray for those who are our leaders in the community, our city council and mayor. We pray that you would bless them and guide them. For our county commissioners, for uh, our state government, for our governor and legislature, the courts. We pray that you would guide all of these people and thank you for their service. We pray that you would keep them safe and healthy. We pray for our, our national government. We pray for our president and Congress and the Supreme Court that you would guide them and that they might listen to what you have to say, that you would protect them and keep them healthy and bless them. 
We pray for those who protect our nation, the military. We pray that you would bless them, and keep them healthy, and protect them, and help them be close to their families, even though they may be distant and miles apart, that you would keep them close. We pray for those who are helping us here at home, like those who do law enforcement, our EMTs, the firefighters, those who keep our utilities running and our roads cleared. Thank you for their work. We pray that you bless them and keep them healthy. We pray for the schools. We pray for the students that you would bless them and help them to learn as things change, it seems like, every week. We pray for those that have to travel. The, those who are the bus drivers and also the those who keep the buses running and those in the schools who are keeping the learning going, the teachers and administrators, librarians, those who have a part in keeping the kids' education so they might learn what they need to be successful. We pray for the hospitals, the staff there, the doctors and nurses and aides and those who take care of the maintenance and prepare the meals and others that are keeping everything going. We pray that you would bless them, keep them safe and healthy, and help to guide them that we might soon open up our hospitals for our patients, for visitors and family and friends. Thank you that we're able to open up some now. I pray that soon, especially those in long-term care, may be greeted and visited by their friends. We pray for our missionaries that you bless them and protect them and keep them healthy. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith, especially those in North Korea, that you would protect them and shelter them in your love and provide for them and keep them healthy. We pray for those who are incarcerated. We pray that you would meet with them that they might know you and be reconciled with you and their families and communities. Now we would pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done.
thank you that we can respond in kindness and give back a portion of what you've given us. We pray now that you would bless these offerings, bless the givers, that we might reach the needs of the people here in Culver. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, um, Donna's going to come in, I guess. Yeah, Donna's going to come and read our gospel reading. Sometimes she surprises me. Be especially careful when you are trying to be good so that you don't make a performance out of it. It might be just good theater, but the God who made you won't be applauding. When you do something for someone else, don't call attention to yourself. You've seen them in action, I'm sure, play actors, I call them, treating prayer meetings and street corners alike as a stage, acting compassionate as long as someone is watching, playing to the crowds. They get applause, that's true, but that's all they get. When you help someone out, don't think about how it looks. Just do it, quietly and unobtrusively. That is the way your God, who conceived you in love, working behind the scenes, helps you out. And when you come before God, don't turn that into a theatrical production either. All these people making a regular show out of their prayers, hoping for 15 minutes of fame. Do you think God sits in a box seat? Here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. This focus will shift from you to God, and you will begin to sense His grace. That much way here. Yeah, I like to emphasize. Thank you, Donna, for sharing God's work. And uh, that is the word of God to us. I, how many of you know a show off? How many of you have been a show off before? I was, especially in junior high and high school, showed off. One of the famous wood uh, show offs we have around here is a woodpecker. Do you ever hear one here? And you know, I used to think they were trying to get bugs out of the trees, but what they do is they drum on things. Sometimes they are getting bugs. But they drum on things to get attention. That's how they set up their territory and attract their, their females, and attract their women, is by beating their head against the wall, or against, a, uh, against the post. And, you know, junior high kids, junior high boys did stuff like that, right? Did you ever see junior high boys show off like that, do crazy things? If you go on Facebook, you can see show-offs all the time. They're, um, going through flaming hoops with their bicycles and things like that. And so there's a tendency for us to show off. And we want to see what other people are doing. Uh, Kale said that one time, she loves these woodpeckers, that's kind of why I brought this up. Um, they got on our gutter, and boy, that makes noise, and they rattle on that. And uh, Gail was walking to work, and just started rattling. I said, Gail, it's trying to get your attention. <laughs> and sure enough, he would look behind to see if she was watching. <laughs> And watch her. So, all of us have a tendency maybe to show off in one way or another. Maybe we show off by being um, dressing a certain way or acting a certain way. And um, the one thing that God said is that we're not to, to show our faith that way, that there's a certain holiness that we are to do, it's, it's, our relationship with God is separate, it's holy, it's different than what we do in the world. 
We don't always um, live among people. I mean, those of us who are out in the country, um, you know, who do we show off to? The capital of the birds, you know, we, we're out there. We don't have an audience, but the people that he's talking about, you know, he's really getting at the, the Pharisees and the, and the other showmen, the hypocrites, who are trying to make themselves appear higher status because of their faith. In other words, they're wanting to use God to make themselves look important. And all of us who are in ministry have to be careful that we don't do that, that we don't um, use God as a tool for us to get to appear more important in the community because what we are doing is for eternity. It's not to show off um, for the local group and for the temporal time period. Um, I've got a medal here that we got in junior high basketball. So I don't think that it's always bad to try to strive and to tr receive rewards for your efforts. Um, I really liked, I, didn't, I can't say that I loved coaching basketball like some people do, but I really liked what it did for some of the kids. Some of the kids um, would have been at home in those days, phones weren't so advanced, but they would have been watching TV or, or doing something besides exercising, and junior high kids need a release. They need to exercise, balance out our days of sitting in the classroom with running, so I was glad to provide that. And some of them really complained, but I had one girl come up and just so surprised because I lost 15 pounds. You know, we were running because I was running to death. For one thing, I had 40 kids out, and I wanted to, to thin it out a little bit because I had to play in junior high, you want to play everybody. So you have three teams, you got 40 kids, what do you do? So I ran them like crazy the first two weeks. And I thought, surely someone will quit. And they wouldn't. They stayed with it. But their reward, their, their uh, physical reward for being in good shape is they may be behind, be behind the first quarter or the second quarter. By the last quarter, the other teams were like dragging. And our teams, for one thing, always had a fresh squad to put in because they had so many kids. But, it, but uh, they were in shape. So the last quarter, we were like, I had to stop them from running up the score because they would, be, they would start really getting the steam going. But their reward for their work was this, this is supposed to be gold. Um, in, a, in a tournament, they would, they would win medals. And some of them had never won anything before. And, um, I was talking to somebody today, I can't remember who it was, or we were texting, and you know, their kids were in last place, they haven't won a game yet. And uh, you know, the reward that you have to get then is just the staying with it because you don't see any results of it, except you know, the fellowship and the camaraderie and being in shape, but you don't get the recognition. But I don't think there's anything wrong with recognition, or even singing or working for recognition, but for what we do for the Lord is sacred and separate. It's not the same kind of thing. We don't, what we do to gain status is, uh, like a football player is, you know, you hit those passes, you, you know, put on, and we were watching basketball, and some of those basketball players put on a show and they put the basketball in, and sometimes they put on a show so they can get a charge. You know, you ever see that? So sometimes we put on our, a show for a performance, but we're not to do that with the gospel. We have to be careful that we're not using this to up our status or so that we'll become somebody that they'll look to and say, oh, what a spiritual person, how good they must be. Because our goodness, our abilities, spiritually especially, are totally dependent upon the Lord. For those of us who become Christians who receive Jesus, we get that source of power, but we have none on our own. Just like David said, I was born in sin. I have nothing good within me. It's only what God gives me that gives me that power to be good. Now, some of us can behave well. You sure see that in school, don't you, when you get kids, and, or if you're taught Sunday school or a VBS, you get kids and behave well. Boy, those are sure nice kids to have. Um, 
But that's not the same in the spiritual world as being spiritual. So sometimes we link spiritual behavior or religion with a relationship with God. So what we have is something that's so precious, a relationship with God, that we don't want to put it out as something that we display to gain favor with people. No, that has to be, our faith has to be something inside. And that's why he, he says, go to a, try to find a quiet space. I always wondered how they did that when this was written in those small houses with busy people all around. How do you find a quiet spot? I mean, that, you know, for us, it's pretty easy. We have a house, and I can go upstairs somewhere. But even sometimes, if we have a couple of guests over, it's hard to find a quiet spot. But they were packed in these little houses um, with lots of people. Maybe some of you have been in countries where people live in tiny houses, a, a, a fifth of this size, and everybody's gathered together. How do they find places? So maybe we may not be able to physically find a place to get away from the crowds, but spiritually, we can focus upon the Lord, get quiet. And that's, that's what this relationship with God is. It's not a, a show. It's a, it's a spiritual, it's a live, it's a living relationship. And what he's saying is don't cheapen that by making it a show. Don't cheapen your, your faith by making it a show. What you have is more precious and eternal. It's sacred. It's different. It's different than how we live in the world. In the world, we have to be so careful when we're working on something that we don't make a mistake. Because if we make a mistake and somebody's watching, people may doubt our competency. They may, they may doubt our abilities. They may laugh at us. One of the things about one of the disadvantages of growing up in a small community is if you did something in kindergarten, they remember it at your funeral. I, there, there's, a, there's a family um, that lives over by Beverly, and anyway, I they, had a, they were doing silage one time, they hired me, they called me to do silage. And they had a truck that had a clutch that would catch. So you would let out, let out, let out, and all of a sudden jump. And they stopped what they were doing and watched me take that first truck out to see what I would do. And of course, I jumped it. And they were laughing and howling about that. And that was 50 years ago, probably maybe longer than that, and I saw that guy last year, and he goes, oh yeah, Leapin' Lena, I remember, I never remember what they called the truck, <laughs> he remembered that all those years, so we have to be so careful, we have to be so careful, you know, some guys wouldn't even admit that they ever did anything wrong, you know, you have to be careful who saw, you ever do that, you do something wrong, you look to see if somebody's watching, we have to be so careful, about that because, for one thing, we don't want to be teased the rest of our life over it. But the other thing is that we don't, if we're on a job, we don't want to be thought of as not being able to do our job. But our Christian faith is a bit different in that we're vulnerable. This is a time of Lent where we look inside and see what we really are needing some work on. We repent, we, we think of eternal. That Ash Wednesday is, we, we think, you know, put that cross on. Um, you know, some people want that symbol because it reminds them that we're just out here temporarily, that we're soon going to be um, with, uh, not physically with the people around us any longer. I have a friend in, well, you know, Ronald, who uh, Elaine brings the papers for, who's been in, in Mexico, and he, he loves to tell the stories about when he was a little kid in, in Riley, but he says it just, it just seems like an instant since all that time, that all those years that he's traveled, he's done everything, it just seems like it was yesterday. It's, it's, the time is like that. And so during Lent, we look at the eternal consequences of our actions, of what we are. 
And we look at the holy, that which is holy, which is set apart for God. It doesn't mean it glows, or it's necessarily, um, in the case of us as humans, it's, it's not, it's a, that we are pure. Like when Jesus says, you are a holy people, or James says it, uh, and Jesus through him, that you are a holy people, a, a nation that's set apart. It doesn't mean that we're perfect or pure as far as us as humans are, but we have that representative power that we represent God, and He is perfect. So we are not perfect vessels. And the Pharisees were trying to pretend they were perfect vessels. And that took away from the perfect God that they represented. Representing, because none of us are perfect. But we all have a perfect God. And our worship of Him in our daily life is separate and holy. It should be something that we do. Um, not in the same way that we do everything else. Um, setting aside, I hope, all of you set aside some time just to talk with God. You know, we talk with God during the day. I hope you do. I hope. Um, and sometimes I get so distracted that I don't think about it. Sometimes you're so busy. If you're teaching school, sometimes you don't have time to talk to yourself, much less um, talk to God. But I hope you find some time to read a verse or two. And as I said before, uh, Elaine got me a book called Jesus Calling by Sarah Young. And uh, it, every day you read that, and it's like, I'm sure they got through this several times, but you know, it speaks to you each day. You find something, some way to where God can speak to you. And I read scriptures too, and listen to what God has to say. Don't just ask Him for things, but talk to Him. Um, reading in the Old Testament, part of my journey through this pastoral work is to, to take classes. And uh, I'm taking one on the Old Testament and some of the stuff that they're writing I disagree with, but there's always something to be learned. And uh, if you recall the story of the Old Testament, Moses spoke with God and it says in our text, face to face, that he met with him face to face as a friend, but they said literally, it's mouth to mouth. <laughs> Wow, I'm going to get much more close than that, do you? So, this goes all the way from what the Pharisees showed as an outward and the other hypocrites showed as an outward show of faith. And this goes all the way on the continuum to where you meet with God that close to where you're face to face, mouth to mouth with God. That's where we receive our holiness. That's where we receive our strength. That's where God will see God working, where people will see God working in us. And then it goes on to talk about actual works we can do, actual things that we can do that show that God loves those people, taking care of those who are without, um, loving those who others may not love. That's truly what God is looking for in us, not how we can show off our spiritual proudness. So let's let God work through us. Let's do good things for our community, knowing that it's not us that, is, that we're representing, but as Paul said, we are ambassadors for God, and He is going to change the world through us as we work together with Him hand in hand, and change this world. Let's do that. Amen. Our closing hymn is... Oh, I can't call it. What is our closing hymn, Gail? 404, Every Time I Feel the Spirit. 404, Every Time I Hear the Spirit.